Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to 10 must-have progressive rock albums for a newbie. This is the series we've been doing, uh, and we're going to continue to do, where we're going to kind of break down all the different subgenres of a lot of the music we cover here on the channel and offer up 10 albums for someone who has never really listened to that style of music before. Now, these aren't necessarily the best albums of this genre. They aren't necessarily my favorite albums of this genre, but these are the best ways, the best albums for someone who, in this instance, prog rock, who has never really listened to prog before. Right? So there's going to be people who are going to see my picks and be like, oh, but there's better albums from that band. I'm sure there are. Right? And there may be more classic albums from that band. But remember, you've got to ease in the newbie, right? The newbie, you can't give the newbie a full on assault right off the bat. You've got to ease them into this genre. So I have carefully picked out 10 albums that I think are great start as a great starter pack for someone who has no experience with prog rock whatsoever. All right? Great way to kind of ease them in and then discover all the other glorious riches that the genre has to offer, right? So we're going to kind of go chronological here. I've got a couple honorable mentions because there's just some that I just couldn't leave out of the discussion, but they didn't quite fit into the 10, right? There's the starter pack, and then there's a couple you'll want to get afterwards. So let's start uh, off at the beginning. Going to go all the way back to 1969. you got to have in your starter pack Court of the Crimson King by King Crimson. you just got to have it, right? No answer for buts about it. This is... Uh, arguably, arguably, the first full-blown progressive rock album. Yeah, there's a couple of others that kind of came before it that had lots of elements of what we love about Prague. But here you got the great voice of Greg Lake. Here you got the Mellotron. Here you got that metallic guitar playing from Mr. Robert Fripp. You've got uh, woodwinds. It's classical. It's jazzy. It's avant-garde. It's heavy rock. 21st century schizoid man, right? The lovely I talk to the wind, the gorgeous epitaph, Moonchild, and the amazing majestic title track. Doesn't get much better than this. And how about that iconic cover, right? Awesome. Gotta have. There's other King Crimsons that you'll want to get next. That's the best place to start, though. You have to start at the beginning. All right, next up, we're going to go to 1971. Probably the band that I had the hardest time with picking a starter album from. Because, you know, to me, there's three places that you got that you need to start with yes. But I didn't want to put all three of them in this list and take up three of the ten spots, right? That's kind of ridiculous. you got to start somewhere. Uh, there's my favorite. There's the one that I consider the greatest prog rock album of all time. I don't know if that's the best place to start for someone who's brand new to progressive rock. Then there's another one that's got some very notable songs on it it's the band's debut of their hot shot keyboard player new at the time i wanted to pick that one but it's got all these little pieces that kind of like you know for a newbie they're gonna be like hey, what's all this kind of little minute and a half noodly shit in between all these out all these other songs right so i didn't want to pick that so the other obvious choice then is to pick the first album with their brand new guitar player who would is still with them today and it's the Yes album. Uh, you know, and you can make an argument that for someone brand new to both prog rock and Yes, this is a fantastic place to start. Because you've got classic tracks like Yours Is No Disgrace. You've got the amazing Starship Trooper. You've got the big hit Seen All Good People. And then you got a couple other cool tracks. you got the little Steve Howe clap instrumental. You've got Adventure and the great underrated Perpetual Change. And granted, you know... You've got Mr. Tony K would go and leave the band after this. In comes Rick Wakeman. And then you've got, uh, you know, Fragile and Close to the Edge, right? Arguably two of their greatest albums alongside this. So you really can't go wrong with any of the three albums. But I would say if you're brand new to Yes and brand new to Prog Rock, this is the one you should start with first. And then once you get to the other two, and especially Close to the Edge, you're going to be like, holy cow, right? I love this this genre, right? I would imagine that would be the case. Hopefully, anyway, that's that's the point, right? Got to ease you guys in. Ease all you newbies in, right? All right, next up, we're going to stick on to um, 1971. Another band that I had a hard decision to make because it came down to two records. 
uh, actually maybe even three. Um, there was one that to me was the obvious, obvious choice, but kind of like my yes issue with Close to the Edge, I don't know if I wanted to give someone who's brand new to Prague this band's most obvious progressive rock assault because it's 45 minutes, all one song. It's great. It's beloved. I get it. But as the first introduction to Jethro Tull, I'm not sure if Thick as a Brick is the absolute perfect choice. However, Aqualung certainly is. And some of you may say, but Aqualung isn't a true prog album. Ah, there's plenty of prog on here. In 1971, there really was no such thing as prog. There were bands doing this thing. But here on this album, you've got hard rock mixed with folk rock, mixed with very complicated arrangements and things. It's certainly prog in my eyes. Right? It's just not the kind of prog that Thick as a Brick and a Passion Play became. But I don't think Thick as a Brick is, is the first album anybody new to Jethro Tull should listen to. This is the one. This is the one. I almost picked uh, Songs from the Wood. Right, That's kind of their beginning of their kind of a little more folky period. And that's a good choice too. Mention only Garrett was a great choice. There's lots of great choices. But I think it's got to be this because it's got Aqualung. It's got Cross-Eyed Mary. It's got Mother Goose and Locomotive Breath and the amazing wind-up and My God and all the other little things. Him 43. There's everything on here. Flutes and heavy rock guitars and acoustic guitars and cool organ and complicated arrangements. And yeah, it's got to be Aqualung for me. That's my pick. All right, we're going to stay in 1971. Uh, this, actually, no, sorry, we're going to go to 1973. Um, this, uh, this band, another interesting choice because they do have many potential choices. Do I pick the double concept album? Mm, not quite. As, not for a newbie? Not quite. Do I pick those two or three beloved early, early albums that are arguably my favorites? Maybe not the best choice for first time, for a first timer. But this album sits right in the middle of a bunch of great albums from them. I think is the best place for someone who's never listened to Genesis before and is brand new to Prague. It's got to be Selling England by the Pound. Again, not necessarily my personal favorite, although I do love it. But it's got some tracks on here that I think for someone new to the genre, new to Genesis, this is a, is a really great place to start. It's, a, it's slightly accessible, but it has all the lovely folky and bombastic and symphonic things that are so great about Genesis. It's still Peter Gabriel is still here. Steve Hackett is still here, right? you got Phil Collins, Mike Rutherford, and Tony Banks. you got Dancing with the Moonlit Night, which is great. There's Mellotron's Galore on this album. There's 12-string acoustic guitars. There's jagged lead electric guitar from Hackett. You got Peter Gabriel's wonderful vocalizations and just great keyboards, Hammond organ, all sorts of great stuff on here. Uh, I know what I like in your wardrobe is a cool, quirky, fun English song, right? Love it. Firth the Fifth, one of the great prog rock songs of all time, containing one of the great guitar solos of all time from Steve Hackett. You know, More Fool Me, The Battle of Ebbing Forest is wonderful. After the Ordeal, The Lush Cinema Show, and of course, Isle of Plenty. I mean, this is just a great, great, very, very British sounding progressive rock album from the early 70s. And I think it's a great place to start for if you're new to Genesis and new to the genre as a whole. All right, so here's another one from 1973, <clears throat> arguably one of the greatest albums of all time. We could sit here and argue and debate whether it's true, true progressive rock or not, but I've always counted this band as a prog rock band because of their experimentation and the uh, wonderful use of the studio and uh, their psychedelic, right? They, this, you could call this one of the greatest classic rock albums of all time for sure, but to me it fits in with all this other stuff we're talking about. And if you're brand new to prog, if you're brand spanking new to prog, what better album to introduce you to all the wonders of this style of music than Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd? It's not my favorite Pink Floyd album. I honestly think I prefer Animals and Wish You Were Here just a little bit more, but I can't argue the fact that this is a legendary classic album. So many great songs on here. So, you know, and it all flows so amazingly. You got the two prong vocal attack from both Roger Waters and David Gilmore. You got those liquidy guitar lines. You got all the cool keyboard effects, uh, the throbbing bass, the great drumming, right? All the use, the use of female vocals, backing vocalists and stuff. Uh, the use of sound effects. You know, you got Alan Parsons engineering and producing this album. Just an amazing audio experience that you have to experience if you're new to prog rock, right? 
Got to choose Dark Side of the Moon. Absolutely. All right. Also, 1973. <clears throat> Got to have this band here. Right? One of the great power trios of all time. Uh, blending rock bombast with classical music bombast. Occasional little touches into <coughs> folky pop. You know the guys. Keith Emerson, Greg Lake, Carl Palmer, otherwise known as Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Brain Salad Surgery is the album I'm choosing. You could choose the first album. could choose Tarkus. could choose Trilogy. Right, those are the four mandatory albums. Uh, for me, it's got to be this one. It starts off with Jerusalem. You know, you got the wonderful, crazy Toccata. If you want to know what Mr. Keith Emerson is all about, it's, it's all right here, right? And you got the, the Greg Lake song, Still You Turn Me On. Shows you what a great pop uh, song songwriter he was. You know, Benny the Bouncer is kind of throwaway. But then you got the Carnival 9, mega epic, which is just absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. It's like I said, it's bombastic. It's complicated. It's just beautiful, beautiful music. Brain salad surgery from Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Can't go wrong there. All right. So here's a band that you could say a good chunk of their catalog arguably is not really prog rock at all. They became a great pop band. Uh, but early on, they were certainly dabbling in progressive rock. And this uh, 1974 album not only is one of the great prog albums of the 70s, but also, I think, one of the great, along with Dark Side of the Moon, one of the most masterfully produced albums of that decade and maybe of all time. It's just a classic to me. And it is Super Tramp Crime of the Century. Wonderful, a wonderful album. Ken Scott production, just amazing. So many great songs. Again, Super Tramp coming at it more from a pop perspective. Uh, but there's certainly lots of daring instrumentation here, richly layered, lushly layered and edited. Um, you got great vocals. You know, you got the two-prong vocal attack, which is also amazing, Rick Davies and Roger Hodgson. Um, you got great little liquidy guitar lines. You got the woodwinds and the lovely electric piano and keyboards. <clears throat> it's kind of jazzy. It's kind of poppy, but it's just really, really good. <clears throat> School is amazing. Bloody well right. Terrific. Hide in your shell. Asylum. Dreamer. The incredible Rudy. If everyone was listening, and the magical, magical title track to kick to finish off the album. Just a great, great album that only gets better with age. Must have for any newbie to progressive rock. All right, let's move ahead. We're going to go. So everything we have talked about up to this point has been from British bands, right? Yes, indeed. So we're going to come over to the U.S. of A. to really the only prog band that was really doing this sort of thing and having any success with it at the time, right? And they came a little later to the game, but still better late than never, I always say. From 1976, Kansas left Overture. And I know for all you folks in the U.K. who are watching this now who say there was never any good prog rock out of the U.S. and Kansas weren't a prog band, sorry, they are. They always have been, they are. And especially this album is their magnum opus. For a newbie to prog rock, you gotta have Kansas, folks. Sorry. Uh, you know, the, the great single, which is hard rock and prog, Carry On Wayward Son. You got the magical The Wall, The Heart of Rock and What's On My Mind, The Great Miracles Out of Nowhere, Opus Insert, Questions of My Childhood, Cheyenne Anthem, and of course, their amazing magnum opus. Two keyboard players, two guitar players, right? Amazing two singers, violin, you got it all here. It's bombastic, it's melodic, it's very, very well produced. Amazing album artwork and just a great, great band, no matter how you look at it. Kansas Left Overture absolutely has to be picked here. Now let's move into the 80s. We're going to go to the second wave of British progressive rock. There's a handful of bands that came out in about 1980 or so. Uh, all of them fans of Yes and Genesis and whatnot. And this particular band, uh, arguably the, not arguably, they were the most popular out of all of them. They had some decent success. They've lasted a long, long time. They're still around to this day. They've had, you know, they were originally their, uh, their six foot something Scottish vocalist wound up leaving the band. They got another guy in the band who has been carrying the torch for them ever since. But I'm going to go back to their 1985 concept album it's Marillion Misplaced Childhood 
Got a big single on it, right? So that this was prod was kind of breaking back into the mainstream once again with Kaylee. But you got pseudo silk kimono. You know the whole album just kind of like flows so well. You got lavender, another single for them. You got bittersweet, the great soaring heart of Lothian. You know waterhole, lords of the backstage, blind curve, childhood's end, white feather. It's so dramatic. It's so lush. Uh, it's wonderfully produced. Great keyboards and guitars. You know. Mark Kelly and Stephen Rothery and the whole band. I mean, just so, so good. Wonderful prog rock artwork, right? It doesn't get much better than that. And just amazing uh, storytelling and vocals from Derek Dick, otherwise known as Fish, right? So, yeah, got to have Misplaced Childhood. Again, my favorite album of theirs is Clutching at Straws. But for a newbie, that's a really kind of dark and moody album. I think this is the one you got to hear first for me anyway. All right, and coming in, and well, not coming in, but we're going chronologically with my number 10, my last pick for the main round. I'm going to go to 2002. So here is a band that, uh, you know, there were a lot of really good prog bands that, that kind of debuted in the 1990s that kind of said, all right, prog, here's this another new wave of prog, right? Arguably the third wave of prog that's been kind of going ever since then. Uh, but one of the shining lights of that kind of like 90s scene and uh, they released an album not that long ago as well. They came back after many years away. But I'm going to go to their 2002 release. It's Porcupine Tree, Stephen Wilson and Company. It's In Absentia. All right. A lot of albums to pick from here. You know, I considered Dead Wing. I considered Fear of a Blank Planet. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can go. Uh, but I think In Absentia to me is the album that I think for someone brand new to Prague and wants a kind of snapshot of what more modern Prague sounds like. This is a great, really, really great place to start. You know, you got Blackest Eyes on here. You got uh, The Wonderful Trains. You got uh, Gravity Islands, which is just terrific. Prodigal Wedding, wedding Nails. I mean... Uh, yeah, Creator has a master tape. Really good stuff. It's It's got pop elements. It's got little bits of space rock and psychedelic elements. It's got lots of heavy rock and metal elements, right? It's it's light. There's lots of light. There's lots of shade. There's heavy. There's mellow. There's just the big guitars and cool spacey keyboards and great, great rhythms and wonderful vocals. Uh, very British sounding, too but also very modern sounding, right? So I wanted to give someone or everybody who's watching something from fairly recent, even though this album is already 20 plus years old. But uh, yeah, you got to have Porcupine Tree. Got to have Porcupine Tree. A very unique man, right? So they kind of, what the great thing about Porcupine Tree is they always kind of forge their own path. Uh, and while you may hear little elements of some of the, uh, the you know, Pink Floyd here or there or whatever, uh, for the most part, Porcupine Tree, very, very unique sounding. And there's lots of other great bands who have come out in more recent years. I'll, I'll, I'll list the Norwegian band Wobbler as a great one from very recent times that folks may want to go check out. Uh, very, very cool. Although they are kind of treading ground of the classics from the 70s, right? Uh, a couple of honorable mentions just because I felt so bad leaving these guys out. But um, I think if you want to go way, 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 way back, you know, there's probably going to be a lot of people watching here that are like, how come you didn't include any moody blues? Well, I do want to mention them because you got uh, I'll just pick Days of Future Past, their, their second album, their first of this kind of more symphonic rock phase. Is it really prog? I don't know if it's really prog to my ears, but you know what? They were using an orchestra. They were using Mellotron. They were doing long suites and lush vocals and uh, bits of psychedelia and folk and things like that. I think you have to kind of include them in the conversation. Uh, for anybody new to Prague, Moody Blues is a, a really good way to kind of dive in here, right? So I do want to mention them, uh, and they got a string of albums, six, seven albums to start their career. All are worth uh, investigating, but that's probably the most notable one, right? Uh, another great place to start for a newbie, I would say, is the Alan Parsons Project. Uh, I picked iRobot. You can certainly pick their first album, second, third, fourth. I mean, they, they, their first like handful of albums are really well worth it. This is a great album because not only does it uh, give you the kind of like very cool synthesizer kind of proggy stuff, but you also get lots of really great pop songs on here as well. A lot of great vocals. This is more about songs and I think uh, the, the overall vibe. A very, very cool album uh, that I think is also a good place to go. And then, you know... I normally would not recommend Gentle Giant to a newbie to Prague, just because Gentle Giant is, to quote one of their album titles, 
an acquired taste. Acquiring the taste is their second album. But I think that once you have kind of digested all this other stuff and you were like, okay, I think I'm on board here with this type of music, uh, you got to go listen to Gentle Giant. And I think for me, I always recommend as a first place to start with the band, I always pick Freehand because I think it's like it gives you all the complexity and weirdness that is so uniquely Gentle Giant. But it's also very appealing and accessible, I think. So you got great songs on here. Just the same on reflection, the title track. Just go listen to those albums and see if this is something for you. These are definitely different. These guys are way different than anything else we talked about today. But I think if you are going to dive into prog rock, you eventually have to get here. And I think Freehand is probably your first place that you should stop. So there you have it, everybody. These are my 10 must-hear progressive rock albums for a newbie, plus a couple extra here. Threw in a couple extra today. I don't like to generally do too many honorable mentions because otherwise we might as well just do 15 or 20, right? But I think uh, if you're new to prog, you've never listened to prog before, this would be a great starter pack for you to dive into this genre. Now, again, I know there's going to be lots of folks watching here who are prog enthusiasts that have been listening to prog for 50 years and are well-versed in the million albums that have been released. I get it. Some of you are going to say, but there's better places to, to there's better albums. There's, I had, there's other albums that are my favorites. We're not really talking to you guys, right? So we can debate all day which are the ultimate choices, right? Which are the best choices. But remember, put yourself in the mind of someone who's never listened to Prague before. Put yourself back 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, where you never listened to this type of music before. And really stop and think, well... What would be the best places to go, considering I was mainly only a pop guy before I listened to prog, or I mainly only listened to hard rock, right, or I only listened to jazz or classical or whatever? <clears throat> what are those albums where it's the first step into this style of music, right? I think these are all really good choices. Again, you, there, there's a couple that we could substitute with other ones, um, and there's really no right or wrong answer here, but these, you know, I really thought long and hard about these choices, and I think if you're brand new to prog, right, these are Pete Pardo's recommendations for all you newbies out there to prog. Go check these albums out. See what you think. Uh, I, I didn't throw a Frank Zappa album in here, right? Because, quite frankly, I love Frank to death. But, Frank, you don't throw Frank Zappa into the lap of someone who's never listened to prog rock before. Just don't do it, right? Just don't do it. But once you've kind of gotten the hang of this stuff... Then once you discover Frank Zappa, you'll appreciate him even more, right? Same thing with like Gentle Giant bands like that, right? And there's lots of other more modern bands to go with. And yeah, I mean, there's, there's so much stuff. The world is your oyster here with this style of music. There's so many albums, so many great bands, but you got to start somewhere. So thanks for watching. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as a post. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also down below, we get the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations our merch page and our cameo page thank you in advance for all your support there it's greatly appreciated and we'll see you soon here with more of these starter packs we got lots of genres coming up we're going to do progressive metal we're going to do power metal thrash metal classic rock right jazz fusion classic jazz it's all up for grabs so stay tuned over the coming weeks and months for more of these starter pack series here and uh, thanks for watching i'm p pardo enjoy your day everybody bye-bye